Welcome to Simplify Pharma. In this lecture, we will discuss the tools of quality by design and how are they useful in pharmaceutical industries. There are three tools, QBD tools that are used in pharmaceutical industry. Design of experiment, DOE, risk assessment and process analytical technology, PAT. Now we will discuss risk assessment in detail in this lecture. If you remember, we were talking about different stages or steps in QBD and among that the third step was risk assessment. The earlier steps we have already covered in our previous lectures. You can refer to those videos. Risk assessment, it is defined as combination of probability of occurrence of harm and severity of that harm. Probability of occurrence of harm, if that harm can occur or not. And if it occurs, what is the severity of harm? This is called as risk assessment. It helps to increase quality of method or process. Now risk assessment, it consists of identification of hazard, then analysis of risk associated with these hazards and evaluation of risk associated with the hazards. Let's take an example to understand this. In analytical method development, small changes in methods like a reagent or instrument, analysis, lab, days, temperature, humidity, they all are included in risk assessment. Why? Because any small change, it can cause a big impact. Uh, the principle of quality risk management, it says, scientific knowledge based evaluation of the risk we are evaluating the risk based on some data for quality which eventually links to the protection of the patient so main aim that we have in our mind is overall protection of the patient safety and efficacy we have to keep in mind while assessing the risk the initial list of potential parameters that can affect cqas it is usually very long, very extensive, but we can reduce that list if we use quality risk assessment. It is commonly understood that risk is defined as combination of probability of occurrence of harm and the severity of that harm. Then risk assessment helps to increase quality of method or process. Also, it is determinant for effect of input variable on method or process from risk assessment one can recognize critical quality attributes that are going to affect the final quality of the product so this is the reason we use risk assessment we need to understand the relationship between risk and criticality in order to understand how to assess the risk risk includes three things that we have to always remember severity of harm probability of occurrence and detectability how severe is the harm and what is the probability it will occur and if it occurs can we detect it so these are the three main pillars how we assess the risk therefore the level of risk can change as a result of risk management if we detect the risk and somehow reduce its probability obviously the level of risk will change now if we talk about cqa and cpp they are things a bit different cqa is primarily based upon severity of the harm if you remember how severe the harm will be based upon that we pick up the critical quality attributes therefore it does not change as a result of risk management whereas cpp it is linked to parameters effect on cqa so if we change those parameters, then you know, any critical potential parameter, uh, process parameter that we can change. So it is based on, upon probability of occurrence and detectability. Therefore, CPP, it can change as a result of risk management. Risk assessment is used in product development to identify relative risk levels at the beginning of product development. To prioritize the limited development resources, we all are aware when it comes to pharmaceutical industry, 
the resources money manpower time all these things they are you know very limited so we need to prioritize whatever we are using to document the decision making process throughout the development to assess the needs of additional studies for scale up and technology transfer to identify appropriate specification critical process parameters manufacturing control and to reduce any variation in critical quality attributes so this is how risk assessment help us in pharmaceutical industry the various steps involved in risk assessment are first of all we need to list out all the components or processes then we need to prepare the process flow chart upon preparing the process flow chart we have to identify what might go wrong so this is called as risk identification then we have to determine what is the likelihood that's why we say probability that it will go wrong this is called as risk analysis then the step comes what are the consequences first we have to determine what might go wrong what is the likelihood it will go wrong then what are the consequences that is called a severity and this comes under risk evaluation so these are the steps for risk assessment then let's take a look at the methods that are used for risk assessment the failure mode effects analysis which is called as fmea failure mode effects and criticality analysis fault tree analysis preliminary hazard analysis let's see in a nut what does all these methods are used for failure mode effects analysis break down large complex process into manageable steps then fmeca fmea it is you know a more advanced version of fmea so fmea is used and along with that if we link severity probability and detectability to criticality it becomes fm ECA then fault tree analysis it is a tree of failure modes combinations with logical operators preliminary hazard analysis it is the possibilities that the risk event happens hazard and operability analysis hazard analysis and critical control points risk ranking and filtering and statistical tools let's take a look how these methods are useful the hazop it is used because it's a brainstorming technique then hacccp systematic proactive and preventive method on criticality risk ranking and filtering it compare and prioritize risk with factors for each risk and the statistical tools in which we use control charts then design of experiments so these are the different methods that are used for risk assessment coming to the next part of our lecture that is risk ranking and filtering we need to understand this only then we will be able to assess the risk the first step in risk ranking and filtering is potential risks are identified then the then their probability of occurrence is estimated then on that basis the severity of the harm is estimated then each individual risk is assigned a specific score based on the probability and severity and based on this score the overall score is determined for each identified potential risk then the risk are ranked and filtered using a criteria specific to the circumstances i know this is very theoretical let us explain it with the help of case studies this is how we uh, rank and filter the risk if you can see over here Uh, on this basis probability and severity the number is given then this is a risk ranking 1 to 2 is low risk 3 to 4 medium more than 6 is high and if it is low broadly accepted risk no further investigation is required if it is medium risk is accepted though but further investigation may be needed to reduce the risk if it is high risk is unacceptable and further investigation is required you need to take more steps in order to reduce the risk so we need to understand that qbt it begins with risk identification 
starting with high risk quality attributes and process parameters the development team carry out design space study so based on these results from these studies and research that is prior knowledge literature review clinical data the development team it can go back to the initial risk assessment and update the risk index risk assessment should be updated at every step of product development life cycle and before submitting a dossier we must try to reduce the number of high risk items because if we leave any point or any risk that is unresolved by the time of submitting that dossier then in that case you know the uh, regulatory authorities they can raise a question mark and control strategy it addresses how we will manage them so in this diagram if you see risk assessment is used at each and every stage throughout the development of life cycle this is the reason risk assessment is very important part of quality by design this is uh, one case study that i have pulled from the internet this is the quality by design example that the fda has given on their website for the immediate release dosage form i will give a link to this pdf file in the description box download this pdf file in this pdf file all the steps of qbd with an example they took they have taken one immediate release dosage form uh, as scripted and using that example they have explained all the steps of quality by design this is you can find on the us fda website so this one case study if you want me to explain this pdf in detail you have to again leave the comments in the comment box any other video that you feel you want explanation you want a lecture on that please leave comments in the comment box do like subscribe and share my video so that the knowledge you know it keeps spreading more and more people can understand they can learn from these videos thank you thank you for watching